We've all been pretending for most of our lives, and for most of that time, it was a pretense we could not even recognize or identify. We were told lies, and we in turn told those self-same lies to ourselves, because those lies were our truth. For many of us, it was not even a very long time ago that we were still feeding at the trough of blue pill wisdom, and yet, over time, we've learned anew. We have learned of female nature, and consequently of our own nature in relation to that nature, and we continue to seek understanding of female nature with a view towards understanding ourselves, and solely for that purpose do we seek knowledge of the human female. A far cry from the mystical, ethereal bond that exists only in the minds of the ignorant, we have correctly assessed the human-female-male relationship to be one that is essentially nothing but a business transaction, and one in which the female has decided advantages over her male counterpart, specifically over the ignorant male. It has been our task to peel away the layers of deception that you might know yourself, and know that which the world at large does not wish you to know, namely that in this business transaction you shall forever be the participant of lesser value, Whatever your attributes might be, you are an appliance to be used, and when the time comes, to be tossed away, as would be any other failed appliance. With no forethought as to your human form and mind, you are there to do. Women are human beings, men are human doings. For most of us, the veil of the mystic has been removed. We understand that our past perceptions of female-male relations were founded on falsehood, and that is part of the pretense we all maintained. But today, I wish to speak of another aspect of the pretense, one which few will touch, perhaps because it sounds too extreme. But I, for one, am past the extreme. Let those who wish to do so label me as they wish. It shall not prevent me from speaking the truth. If the human female views the human male as a discardable appliance in utility, within the context of the so-called romantic relationship, how then does she view him outside of that relationship? I will claim that she has no view for man whatsoever. Man is invisible to woman in the collective sense. You as a man are nothing, not even an appliance. You are a non-entity. How do I know this? I simply look at the world. That world tells the entire story and is one fraught only with callous disregard towards men. When we look at the legal system, what consideration has the female shown us? When we look at education, what consideration has the female shown us? When we look at medical spending and research, what consideration has the female shown us? When we look at the job market and employment, what consideration has the female shown us? You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Most certainly not. Men do not do so, but the more important question is, do women do so? What fruit have women borne forth these past decades? Have they borne forth fruit, or have they borne forth thorns and thistles? Has the world of men collectively been duped into thinking they gather naught but fruit, even when all the while they are being entangled and cut to ribbons by their brambles? This is, of course, the grand deception, that of the female as fruit-bearer, as nurturer, as kindness embodied. And collectively speaking, it has served female kind well, for without this false perception, there never would have been a feminism, nor would have affairs reached the deplorable state they are currently in. And this is the key to understanding the pretense. We have a very real and biological bias that strives to prevent us from seeing the truth for what it is, be it in the game of reproduction, or elsewhere in the game of survival. What fruits have women brought forth in the last few decades that were either not poisonous to men, or somehow benefited men in like fashion akin to the manner they benefited women? Has the domestic violence industry helped men? Have educational and hiring quotas helped men? Has the disproportionate amount of money spent on breast cancer research helped men afflicted with prostate cancer. Pose to yourself the question, what have capital F feminism, and by extension the masses of lowercase f feminists, done to improve the lot of men? Or better put, what have they done to improve their own lot without it being at the expense of men? 
If you find yourself answering the question with little to nothing, then you are getting closer to the truth. It is true that men and women, in the strictest biological sense of the word, are not competitors. Evolutionarily speaking, of course. Neither have we ever been partners, but simply each other's means to the end of procreation. With all manner of conventions, pacts, and compromises, mostly struck in favor of the female in order to arrive at said procreation. But in the context of modernity, we can no longer afford the lie and pretense that men and women do not compete against each other. We most certainly do. Leave it to traditionalists to speak in reverence of the pluperfect, and lost idealists to fawn over the conditional. I shall only speak in the present. The simple truth, men, is that women are, even as I speak these words, taking your jobs, your educational opportunities, your medical research that could one day save your life, and they are doing so with no regard whatsoever not the slightest consideration for the consequences reaped upon you as a man, meaning that medical treatment you will not receive will have to do with the fact that those monies were allocated elsewhere, and you know exactly where that elsewhere is. Make no mistake, this is a war. But it is not a war we started, though we are in part, through almost Neville Chamberlain-like acquiescence, responsible for the far-flung state it has reached, no, we did not start this war. It was foisted upon us with no mercy, and by a manifold of forces, the forces of politicized feminism, and feminism being little else than weaponized female nature, by women themselves in their willingness to go along with it, by the state in caving in to women's every wish, by vote whore mongering politicians buying currency in the form of female votes, and by our very nature which refuses to recognize the female as a full human being, capable of virtue, yes, but equally capable of venality, flawed through and through, just as we all are. It is that biological nature that has deceived us, and deceives us even now, that tells us that women are innocuous, effete, and well-meaning. No doubt those were the guiding thoughts of legislators in matters of divorce, education, and employment in the past, for it is clear to me that it is also their current modus operandi. This is a war on men, but it is not a war of guns and bullets. Knowledge is our weapon. Our ammunition is our words. If we refuse to see that we are indeed competing against women, things will become far worse. And why? Consider what you as a man, more specifically as a quote-unquote utility, have to offer the world. You have your skill, and you have your experience. Nothing else. And the question that must be posed in today's climate is, is that enough? Think about that when you apply for a job. You bring your skill and experience. Your female counterpart and competitor has that and a veritable colossus of other support. She has state enforced hiring quotas. She has congenital biological favoritism going for her and she has the entire world behind her in its refusal to see a woman cry, let alone come home in a coffin. She has all of these things going for her, and she wants the job you want. How is that not you competing against her as a man? Women compete for funding and education, for medical research, for anything that can be a benefit to them, and men just stand there, twiddling their thumbs, allowing it to happen. Man-woman myth is right. In this regard, men are stupid. Meanwhile, all you can see and read about is how men are falling behind and failing, how women are outperforming men, out-earning them. The list is endless. When the rhetoric is framed as such, can you honestly still keep a straight face and claim that we are not competing against women and that women are not competing against men? Of course, we are hindered by our instinct to help women not see them as competitors, as can be seen the seemingly harmless aid a male university student renders to a female by helping her complete a chemistry lab report. Would he have done the same for a man? I think not. We see other men as competitors, and by dint of nature this is true, but just as we have moved past certain deterministic principles with regards to relationships with women, so too is it high time to move past them with regards to your fellow man. 
knowing all you do now, staring at the torn rags of the veil of lies you once called life and truth, if I were to now pose to you the question, are you your brother's keeper? What answer, other than a resounding yes I am, could you possibly give? This is not to say that competition should or shall cease amongst men, it certainly will not, but rather than turning a competitive gaze upon your fellow male, while showing kindness and helpfulness to the female, I ask you to short-circuit your very nature and do the reverse, recalling man-woman myth's words, the other man is you, and I can assure you that that good will and forbearance that you show towards the woman is in no way reciprocated towards you. She can and will see you starve to death on the street, not out of malice, but simply because she gains some benefit from doing so. A benefit to her, of course. Remember, you are invisible, non-existent. It's not malice at all. It's simply business as usual. A special kind of sociopathy that, for reasons known to us for a while, has worldwide condemnation. But until we drop this collective pretense that women are somehow our natural partners, that they wish well upon us, as well as the pretense that feminism is anything but weaponized female nature, things will continue to become worse. More boys will be lost in the school system, ending with more men lost in life, among other things. All there will be is naked survival, and to be frank, I think we might be there already. We need to stop being afraid, for what we do and say will never have the rubber stamp of approval of the masses. It's part of what it means to go your own way. Every day that passes without acknowledging this truth, without acknowledging what must be acknowledged, is a day that further contributes to our destruction. The time for pretense is over.